In this video, I'll show you how to find the standard error of a proportion. I want to start off with a quick scenario as to why we would want to do this. If we threw a six-sided die n times and recorded the proportion of successes, it would be close to, but probably not equal to, a perfect 1 over 6. Suppose that we threw the die another n times and got another proportion, and then another n times and so on. If we did this enough times, the proportion of successes of our samples would form a normal distribution with a mean equal to p and a standard deviation given by the following. Where standard error of a proportion is equal to the square root of p bracket 1 minus p over n, and n represents the number of observations. In question 1, we're asked to find the 68% confidence interval for rolling a 3 for a die tossed 150 times. Since it's being tossed 150 times, I'll set n is equal to 150. And since a die contains 6 sides, this die in particular, rolling a 3 will happen 1 and 6 times. With that said, we now have everything we need to find the standard error of this proportion. So I'll say SE is equal to the square root of 1 over 6 times 1 minus 1 over 6 divided by 150. Let's use our calculator. The square root of 1 over 6 times 1 minus 1 over 6. And notice how careful I am with my brackets. Make sure you do the same. Divided by 150 gives me the following standard error. 0.0304. 0 0.0304. 0 the next step is to take this number and add it and subtract it to 1 over 6. So the average is 1 over 6 plus minus 0 0.030. Now using our calculator, we have 1 over 6 plus 0 0.03, which gives us approximately 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 1 over 6 minus decimal 0 0.03, and that gives us 0 0.14. Therefore, with a confidence of 68% that in 150 rolls of a die, the proportion of threes will lie between 0 0.14 and 0 0.20. And the reason why I say 68% probability is because we did not multiply our standard error by anything. If we had multiplied it by 2 before adding and subtracting to 1 over 6, then that would assume a 95% confidence interval. We didn't do that, so it's assumed to be 68%. Let's do a similar problem now in question two. In a poll of 152 students at Tech College, 87 students said that they would vote for Jones for president of the student union. 87 out of 152 students. So if you relate this back to question one, this would be our p-value. Estimate the support for Jones among the entire student body. So we have everything we need to find the standard error of a proportion. Standard error of a proportion is equal to this fraction, 87 over 152, times 1 minus that same fraction, divided by 152. Let's use our calculator. And being as careful as we were before, I'll bracket this whole numerator and then bracket this fraction, 87 over 152, 1 minus 87 over 152. Close the bracket for the top and divide by 152. This will give me 0 0.04. 0 0.04. It's very important that you try this on your own calculator in case you have a different calculator than mine. So once I get this number, I'll use the 68% confidence. So I'll take this and add it and subtract it to my proportion of 87 over 152. This will give me two numbers. So if I add it and subtract it, here's what we get. 87 over 152 plus decimal 04. This gives me 0 0.61. 
doing the same thing but with subtraction. We get 0 0.53. Thus, we expect that there is a 60% chance that the support for Jones is between 0 0.53 and 0 0.61, which is pretty good. Or in other words, this person will capture 53% and 61% of the vote of the entire student body. And so there you have it. Two examples on how to find the standard error of a proportion.